When you're traveling somewhere new, the last thing you want is to look like a tourist. Not only is it uncomfortable as you can attract unwanted attention, but it's also risky as it could make you a target for theft, scams, or even worse. And after solo traveling the world for more than 20 years myself, I've learned a thing or two about how to blend in like the locals. So much so that people often come up to me when I'm traveling and ask me for directions. So in this tip, I'm gonna share with you seven of my top tips for how to look more like a local and less like a tourist. Plus, if you're new to my channel and you comment on this video and subscribe today, you'll be automatically entered to win a $100 gift card from our sponsor, Unbound Merino. My first step is to dress for the occasion. Always spend some time researching the weather and also the style of the place you're going in advance. So that way, when you arrive, you can be prepared for the elements, but also dress in alignment with the culture of the people. And that way you'll know if you go to San Jose, Costa Rica, for example, that only tourists wear shorts there. So you should bring more casual pants and jeans. Or if you go to Amsterdam in the Netherlands, you'd know that women rarely wear high heels there because for the Dutch, it's more important to dress for practicality rather than fashion. And also to make sure that you can wear clothes you can bike in. Regardless of where you're going, a safe bet is to opt for a smart casual look that consists of solid and neutral colors that you can mix and match. Blues, grays, black, white, and taupe or beige are all good options, and you can always add a pop of color with a hat, scarf, or other accessories. But what you definitely want to do is avoid any loud, flashy clothing, so that means leaving your Hawaiian shirts for Hawaii and your sparkly tops for Las Vegas. But this also goes for activewear as it seems to be exclusively an American trait to hang out all day in your yoga pants or your workout clothes. If you're not sure what to wear, then underpack for your trip and then you can pick up some local pieces when you arrive. It's usually really easy to find a mall or a shopping street or district and the quality of the clothing is often better as well. I still have designer dresses that I bought in boutiques in Florence, Italy and Bali, Indonesia as far back as 10 or 20 years ago. So you can get some really nice pieces that will last you a long time and also give you a little bit of that local style. If you like to wear sports attire, then opt for local logos rather than your home team. That means leaving your Laker stuff at home Home and picking up a soccer jersey instead. When in doubt, overdress. Don't wear high heels to go hiking, of course, but looking stylish never hurts, especially if you're in Europe or a major city like Tokyo or Hong Kong. It's also important to dress nicely if you're headed somewhere to see and be seen, like Mykonos, Ibiza, or the French Riviera. What you wear on your feet is also important, especially if you're gonna be going out to any nice dinners or to clubs that may have a strict dress code. So you wanna wear casual but comfortable shoes that you've already broken in before your trip and try to avoid wearing running shoes, flip-flops, and especially don't wear Crocs. Regardless of how you're dressed, always protect and conceal your valuables because nothing screams Taurus more than walking around with a super expensive camera around your neck. Of course, you'll want to take photos wherever you go, but keep your gear discreet in a simple backpack in a dark color rather than walking around with a selfie stick and a bright pink backpack. If you're carrying your passport, wallet, cash, or anything that you don't want stolen, then make sure to keep it in a secure interior compartment of your bag. And if pickpockets are a concern for you, then consider investing in an anti-theft bag from a brand such as Travelon or PackSafe. It's okay to wear a decent watch or some jewelry, but leave your most valuable items at home. This video is sponsored by Unbound Merino. A great way to pack light and look good is with Merino wool clothing. 
Merino wool is naturally antibacterial, odor resistant, and moisture wicking, which means you can wear it for weeks without having to wash it. It feels comfortable like active wear, but it looks classier. Unbound Merino offers a color palette that combines flawlessly, letting you transition easily from daytime to nighttime. Unbound styles are soft, comfortable, stylish, and perfect for layering. I'm currently on an extended trip here in Europe, traveling for seven months through three seasons, spring, summer, and fall. And bringing a lot of pieces from Unbound Merino with me has allowed me to pack light while being ready for all different types of weather and travel conditions. I also love that their wool is organic and sustainably sourced from farms in Australia. Use my link pinned below this video to give their clothing a try. They have tops, bottoms, socks, beanies, boxers, and more. Plus, you can save up to $94 by bundling items together in one of their packs. I hope you like their clothing as much as I do, and thanks again to Unbound Merino for sponsoring this video. My third tip is to travel during off-peak times. If you go to Europe in the summer, it often feels like you're surrounded by tourists because you are. But if you travel in the shoulder season or the low season, you could often be the only tourist around. Not only is this great for your wallet because you can save tons of money on tours and accommodations, but it also gives you a better perspective on what the local community is actually like outside of the tourist seasons. I've experienced this firsthand as I've been to more than 60 countries and it even happened to me just last year when I traveled to Amsterdam during the winter. I was there just a few days before Christmas and it was so calm and serene, no tourists around, just locals ice skating and enjoying time with their family and friends and it felt like a really intimate and special time to be there. Contrast that to this summer when I flew to Amsterdam for the weekend and it was the complete opposite. It was so crowded that you literally had to wait in line to get onto the sidewalk around Dam Square and Central Station. So travel off peak and people might not even think that you're a tourist. Now, when it comes to sightseeing, there are always going to be some touristy places that you really just can't miss, like the Parthenon in Athens, the Colosseum in Rome, and the Eiffel Tower in Paris. But if you're going to go to one of these really popular destinations, then it really pays to book your ticket in advance so you can avoid having to wait in long lines with all of the other tourists. This also goes for if you're traveling with a group. I love group travel, I do it sometimes, but you definitely stand out as a tourist when you're in a group of other tourists. Maybe you're all wearing bright orange shirts and name tags and your tour guide is holding a flag. So people can instantly spot you as a tourist that way. So keep that in mind. And also when you're walking through the really, really touristy areas of a city, every place has their tourist district and their locals neighborhoods. And so if you're in a place like Barcelona, of course you're gonna wanna go check out La Rambla and check out the scene there. But if you do end up sitting down to eat a meal in front of a big sign that says English menu, then that's a surefire way to know that you're a tourist. So maybe go to those areas and check them out. But if you want to get a better deal on food and shopping, then try to find some of the more local neighborhoods because part of the fun of travel is getting off the beaten path and finding those hidden gems, which are often only a few minutes away. So if you're in Barcelona and you just go maybe 15 minutes north, into Pogli New District, past the Olympic Village, you can find some really great local restaurants for half the price of La Rambla and way better food too. If you're in a coastal area traveling somewhere, then maybe try to go a little bit inland and you can find more local and moderately priced restaurants. This also goes for shopping as well. So you're gonna wanna avoid those very touristy stores that are all selling the same stuff and try to find some more authentic places to buy souvenirs. 
And you can do this by just shopping in the normal places outside of the tourist areas or by using an app like Google Maps or TripAdvisor to find restaurants and shops. But what I do in that case is just look for places that have fewer reviews, still positive reviews, but if you find somewhere that has 3,000 or 5,000 reviews, then chances are it's probably in a really touristy area. Another app that I like to use is called Spotted by Locals, where local volunteers post about their favorite places to shop, eat, and explore, and you can download city guides around the world for only about $20, so check that out too. Where you go and don't go for sightseeing is also important, so always avoid places where animals are the main attraction. Those are always tourist traps and the animals are almost always treated poorly. That means don't ride elephants in Thailand and don't pay to get your picture taken with a wild animal such as a tiger or a monkey. Another tip is to avoid looking like the lost tourist. So this kind of goes along with keeping your valuables out of sight. Also keep in mind if you're trying to find your way around, not to just stop in the middle of a crowded plaza or a street. If you need to check your map, then stand to the side, maybe pop into a shop or a cafe and look up where you're going and then walk out with confidence. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people get their phones taken right out of their hands because they were just trying to find their way around. It's totally okay to look at your map. Just try to do it off to the side so you don't look like a lost tourist. And then even if you do get lost, you can always check your phone again and get back on track. You don't have to follow the exact route that the map is giving you through the winding streets of Rome. So you can take a few wrong turns and get lost and then get back on track a few blocks later. To avoid looking like a tourist, you wanna walk around with intention and awareness and also looking up because if you're always looking down at your phone, you're gonna miss all of the beautiful scenery. Another tip is to use public transportation. So go ahead and download a regular travel card for the bus or the metro or the tram rather than getting one of those tourist day cards or riding around on the hop on hop off bus which we know are full of tourists. It's also really helpful to just go ahead and download the local transportation apps and also keep in mind there could be some alternative methods of transportation for you if you're in Denmark or the Netherlands or Sweden, one of the best ways to get around is by bike. But also try to avoid the very touristy forms of transportation, especially tuk-tuks or mopeds in Southeast Asia, which can also be very dangerous. You can get an idea of all the different transport options in your area by using a website like roamtorio.com. <music> Regardless of where you're going, learn a little bit about the local culture before you arrive so you can really start to integrate what it would feel like to be a local there and not a tourist. Culture Crossing is a really cool website where you can do this. You can download some basic guides about cultures in different countries from communication styles to how to dress business meetings, and social norms. I also like the website Hofstede Insights with their cultural comparison tool where you can compare different countries and contrast them on their cultural differences. Not only is it important to know things like how to dress, which we talked about in this video, but also just regular social norms like where to pay at a restaurant and how much to tip without having to look it up while you're there. Learning some common words and phrases in the local language is also gonna help you a lot so you can at least communicate on a basic level. I'll never forget the first time I went to Mexico when I was 17 years old and I was just standing at the cash register in a supermarket holding up the line because I couldn't understand the number that the cashier was telling me to pay. And of course, now we have contactless payments and you might not have to count out any money, but learning some common words like please, thank you, 
yes, no, excuse me, and even some commonly used numbers can be very helpful for you. And a little goes a long way here because most people don't take the time to learn anything. You can buy a book of the most common words and phrases, or you can use one of the many online language learning classes or apps, but even spending a little bit of effort here can help you out a lot and you can hit the ground running and also the locals will really appreciate it. Also remember that your mindset has a lot to do with how you're perceived as either a tourist or a traveler and how you perceive yourself. So you're gonna feel a lot more comfortable if you follow some of the tips in this video and also take some time to prepare for your destination before you arrive. So of course it's normal that you're gonna look different or you might speak a different language or sound different and that's perfectly okay. But if you take a little bit of time to study the culture before you go, and if when you're traveling there, you try to perceive what it would be like to live like a local rather than a tourist and really talk with locals and interact, you're going to earn their respect and you're also going to get a more realistic view of what life in that place is really like and not just the glossy and touristy version. If you follow the tips in this video, you'll be blending in like the locals in no time and you can screenshot this list as a reminder for your next trip. Do you have any tips about how to look like a local? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss another video about travel, culture, or an overseas lifestyle.